Hey everybody, what's going on today? Another Photoshop CS6 tutorial here for you. Today we're going to learn how to convert a selection into a path. And it's really easy, so this tutorial shouldn't really take too long. So what I want you to do is go ahead and import an image that you would want to make into a path. And the easiest would be something that doesn't have um, a background that you can easily just select and get the outside of the selection or something like that enough something easy enough like that so go ahead and take a, a tool whatever tool you need and make your selection so I'm gonna click on the white here and then I'm gonna go to select inverse so I have this tomato selected now what I'm gonna do it's super easy I'm going to go over here to my paths panel and you can see that there's nothing here right now I can go ahead down here and click on this button down here to convert my selection into a path if I do that it automatically makes a path but if I do it that way I don't really get any options to mess with so I like doing it a different way if you hold down alt when you're going to click on the path here or click on the button here we get a make work work path button here now we've got a tolerance setting now, if we set the tolerance down low, this tolerance goes from 0 to 10. If you set the tolerance down low, it's going to make a, a few more intersecting points, and it's going to follow the edges a little bit better than if you put it up higher. If you put it up high, then it's going to make, a, or make smoother paths, but might not follow as well. So let's go ahead and set this to 1, and I'm going to hit OK and you can see that a work path has been made and you can see that it is independent from my layers if you look closely you can see that there is a, an outline there that is the path now if you need to select the path go ahead um, this little section right here with the text and the shape tools and the path selection tool is what we're looking for these are your vector editing tools you can go ahead and select the path and you can see the different points that are on it all right now let's go ahead and make let's go back in our history to where we had our selection and let's now make the selection with a higher tolerance and i'll put this at 10 and i'll hit ok now you can see that it's smoother you can see that the path here goes off the line let's go ahead and turn off well we'll keep the white background on so we can see a little better and I click and you can see that there are definitely a lot less points so it's not going to conform as well to your image but it makes it a smoother image so use the tolerance depending or differently depending on what type of image you have if you don't have a lot of points that need to be fixed then you want to use a high tolerance so if you just have a plain old circle go ahead and use a 10 but if you have a more uh, complex image, use a lower tolerance so you can get uh, more of the selection around it. So that's how you convert a selection into a path. Now, the reason you would want to do this, that when you make a selection in Photoshop, the selections are created using pixels. So the accuracy of your selection is based on the resolution of what you're selecting now if you're selecting something that's a low resolution then um, it can be a problem when you're working with um, web images or like if you need some presentation graphics or something like that but if you convert the selection into a path you can reshape the path and use Photoshop vector tools these ones over here and it gives you more control over your final results so that's, a, that's it about uh, c converting a selection into a path. So I hope you guys learned a little bit about, a little bit more about paths and vector images. And you can, for example, I'll show you that you can um, edit this uh, path. So if I hold Control T to make my free transform, I can scale this up and down. And that's not something that you're able to do with the uh, selection. So. Just wanted to let you know that, and that's the end of the tutorial. So thanks for watching this one, and hopefully you guys can put this new information to good use in your next project.
look forward to seeing you guys in the next tutorial. See you guys later.